Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 is running the TouchWiz interface, but on an Exynos 1.4 gigahertz processor. Super fast, the same chip that's found in the Galaxy Note. How fast is it? In this video, we're going to find out. Let's get to it. So the Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 is running pretty much the same software that you will find on the Galaxy Tab 8.9 and 10.1. We're on Android 3.2, which is of course Honeycomb, and as most of you know, Honeycomb is quite slow and quite horrible. And you're going to see a lot of examples of why it's slow and why it's horrible, even on this device, which has a 1.4 gigahertz Exynos processor. Ice cream sandwich cannot come soon enough. The development community has still yet to get ice cream sandwich, even on a beta or alpha form, on the Galaxy Tab 7.7. .7. So of course, we've got the TouchWiz interface here, which has a variety of widgets that you can add. You can go up here and press the plus button and add more widgets. There's a great example of the slowness of Honeycomb. It took about two seconds to access the widget tray, and yet, if I go back in it now, it'll probably be much faster. Honeycomb is inconsistently slow. Um, so here, of course, we can flip through all the widgets that we get in Honeycomb and in TouchWiz. Get a lot of, lot of choices. You can add and remove home screens if you'd like, and add more, which is a nice touch. And let's go back to the main screen and flip around. Now, just like the 8.9 and 10.1, Samsung has added what I like to refer to as quick apps. So down here, if we press this up arrow, we'll get these applications that will actually float on top of the application that you're using. I'll demonstrate. I'm going to go into the weather application, get this nice full screen display. And let's say I want to just bring up the calculator, calendar, task manager, any of these things real quick. So here's the calculator app, and I can use I can still use the app behind the calculator as if the calculator was kind of a stay on top application. And we can do that with other apps as well. So we'll go to that little up arrow. Let's add the calendar. And you can only have one on at a time. You can also use these quick apps to launch the full application. So let's go back into, say, uh, the calculator application. We'll click the up arrow here, and it will take you into the full calculator application. Kind of a cool use of the bottom bar here in Honeycomb, uh, which doesn't get much use otherwise. So you see what just happened? I went back to the home screen, and the widgets took about two seconds to load. However, if I were to go back into an app and back to the home screen, the widgets are inconsistently uh, loading. So that's just, again, a, a side effect of having Honeycomb. Another interesting thing that Samsung lets you do is customize this fourth key or this fourth button on the bottom bar here. So if I click on it right now, it's set to go right into search, kind of like an old school Android 2.3 effect. A lot of Android devices these days do not have the search icon. The way you can configure that is you go into settings here, you go into screen, and it's called quick launch. And you can set it to one of four things. You can have it do a screen capture, with, which is default for the 8.9, 10.1, and 7.7. .7. And then we can also do application so it will launch your application tray, search, or a quick way to launch the camera. So a really cool customization feature there. And we're going to go back to the home screen. Now, of course, with Honeycomb, we've got the Honeycomb application tray, which is probably very familiar to most people. You can actually edit the application tray here. This is a little Samsung touch. We can move items around, reorder them, so that you can have the apps that use the most frequently up at the top. And let's go back to the home screen. OK, so let's jump into the web browser and take a look at web browsing performance, which obviously is very important in day-to-day -day operation. See how the 1.4 gigahertz Exynos processor shines. Of course, this is the Honeycomb browser, so you're going to expect Honeycomb performance that might be slightly better uh, because it's a 1.4 uh, gigahertz processor. So we're going to jump to pocketnow.com. Let's see if we can go to the desktop view first. So we'll actually go to the mobile site. And of course, we can go up here and we can do a few things. We can print, although of course, you can only print to a Samsung printer, which is a little bit ridiculous. And we've got the standard settings here uh, that is set up in a two-pane grid. You can set the home page. You can do Google Chrome Sync, which is nice, so it'll keep all your passwords up to date uh, based on what your browser preferences are. We can clear cache, clear history, all of that stuff. And then there are a couple things in labs. Really like the quick controls. You turn that on, and what will it will do, it will hide the top bar and give you a full screen browsing experience. Then you can take your thumb in from the side, and you get all of these controls. And there are more controls than you would experience on other 
uh, Android devices. So what we can do here is we can go to the URL bar. We can go back. We can go forward. We can refresh. We can enter tab mode, really cool way to access tabs. We can stop, add bookmark, and go to settings. Let's go to the full version of pocketnow.com. We'll test screen rotation speed. Let's see how it looks as it's loading. A little, little stutter there. Saw the page kind of uh, load a little bit slowly there. It's not done yet. Let's zoom in. Very smooth, but as you can see, it's having trouble keeping up uh, with the page loads. A lot of blank spots there. Now that the page is completely loaded, it gets a little bit better, but it's still not as fluid as it should be with such a nice processor. So while it loads, we're going to flip it into landscape. No screen animation, because I have got screen animations turned off pretty quick there. Let's go to a very long web page. Let's go to Engadget. So I'm going to go over here and go to the URL bar. I'm going to type in Engadget. And by the way, while we're on the keyboard, I want to talk about the options that you get because Samsung adds in their own keyboard options. This is the standard Samsung keyboard. You can also press the button in the upper left corner here to get a taller keyboard. Kind of like the smaller keyboard, it's more conducive to typing in portrait. You can go into the bottom right corner here, tap on the keyboard icon, and change to swipe. And the cool thing about swipe is that it brings you a smaller keyboard the same size or kind of the same aspect that you would get on a Samsung phone. And you can actually move the swipe keyboard to the right or to the left, which is really cool. If you go into landscape, you can do likewise. So you can move it around on the screen, or there's actually a button to expand it to fit the entire width of the window. So a lot of keyboard options on the, on the Galaxy Tab 7.7, which is quite great. Uh, so we're going to go to Engadget.com. Let's switch back to the regular Samsung keyboard. Just more practical. Engadget.com, and we'll press go. Let's open up another tab. Let's push it to the test here. Uh, so we're going to go to, say, The Verge. Get some graphic intense websites up here. See how the Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 handles it. Let's keep it going. Let's go to Google. OK, there's Google. And now we have three tabs loading. We can switch between them with this cool quick view. Let's go up to Engadget. And here is the website. Very long web page, a lot of graphics. Let's flick down and see how it goes. Not the smoothest thing in the world. It gets the job done. Uh, but again, Honeycomb really keeps it back. If you were to put an ice cream sandwich ROM on this, this browsing experience would be immediately improved. Another thing we should mention is that we cannot figure out why the Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 has a speaker grill at the top. Very strange. In fact, the Verizon version of this does not have the speaker grill at top. When you play sound on this device, the sound comes out of the dual speakers on the bottom here, not out of the top. When there's a speaker grill on the top, it implies that it can be used as a phone. Obviously, you're not going to hold the 7.7 .7 to your head and use it as a phone. So we're wondering what ha Samsung has planned, uh, why they have a speaker on the top there. And it went into kind of the inverse orientation. So bottom line with the software and the Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 is that it's held back by Honeycomb. Uh, it's got the potential to be an amazing tablet. TouchWiz is a great interface. Uh, the screen, the Super AMOLED screen, really pops fantastic color, fantastic contrast. But the speed issues of Honeycomb make this tablet difficult to use at times. In fact, at times, I want to go back to the Galaxy Tab 7 with gingerbread on it, because that at least is consistently quick. Uh, so we can't wait for the ice cream sandwich update on the Galaxy Tab 7.7. .7. Keep an eye out for the final review on pocketnow.com. We'll put a link in the description when that's ready. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And of course, thanks for watching. That's it for now.